Now we're testing out the cliff sensors right here. So you can see we have the vacuum right at the top of the steps and it's going to try to drive right off. And there we go. It's smart enough to recognize the stairs and continue on with its clean. Hey everyone, Digital David here today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the iRobot Roomba i4 Plus. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here where we can learn more about this vacuum cleaner. The plus signifies that we have the self-emptying base version. So you can see a nice graphic of the self-emptying base. Then we can see a nice graphic of underneath the RoboVac with its patented dual brush roller design. The automatic dirt disposal and self-emptying can last up to 60 days before you have to empty out the main unit. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, we have our warranty information. This product does come with a one year limited warranty. Next, we have an owner's guide and manual for our cleaning base, our automatic dirt disposal. This is in multiple languages, walking you through everything you need to know about your base all the features, how to use it, and get everything set up. And then they have a troubleshooting section and their customer service and contact information. The same information is repeated again in multiple languages. Next, you can see we have our owner's guide and manual for i3 and i4 Roombas. Same thing, it's gonna be in multiple languages walking you through everything you need to know about your Roomba how to use it, how to clean it, how to troubleshoot it, accessories you can get for it if you want, care and maintenance for your vacuum. So we can learn all about that. And then we have the customer care section again. And then you can see all the information is repeated in other languages. Next, you can see we have our power cord and cable right here for our self-emptying base. And you can see the base. Nice treads for the vacuum to climb up on as it makes contact with the charging contacts. Looks like we got an indicator light there. We got the iRobot logo. We have our dust bin extraction area right here that's gonna pull all the contents out of our RoboVac automatically once it's docked on the base. Then you can see at the top we have a nice lid that we can open up to reveal our uh, dust bin bag inside. That's good for around 60 days and then we can empty it out. Let me go ahead, let's just flip it to the back side so you can see on the back right here, we have our cable management option and you can see where we plug in the power cable right there. But you can put all your extra cable here and fish it through as needed depending on your setup. And you can see on this side of the unit, we have our exhaust vent right there. Pretty cool. I'll also go ahead, let's open it up one more time so you can see on camera the inside with our vacuum dustbin and bag. And they have instructions showing you built into the top as well how to properly install the vacuum bag right there. And last but not least, we have the i4 vacuum cleaner. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. So here's the vacuum cleaner up close. Check it out. You can see front and center, we have the iRobot logo and branding. We have three control buttons for it. The first ones are home, return to dock, and charge button. The second one is our power on and off button and our clean button. And the third one is our spot cleaning mode. You can see beautiful color scheme going on. And we have a fabric woven pattern right here at the top that looks great. You can see one of our navigation modules right there. Now let's look at it from the back side. So you can see the back of this unit, we have our trash icon. We can press this button to remove our dust bin. And now you can see our dust bin right here. This does have the automatic dirt disposal and you can see how it's gonna open up that flap right there and pull all the contents out automatically. Here's an air filter on the side. Do not get it wet per the instructions. No water there, but you can use water for the rest of the dustbin. We have another trash can button we can press to open it up to easily empty the contents ourselves if needed. So you can do that right there. And then we can just gently line everything back up. You kind of hook it in and then just press it back in place. Now you can see the left side of the unit right here with our bumper for navigation. Here it is from the front. You can see our navigation sensors and on the right side, we have our bumper again. And it says iRobot Roomba i4. 
Now let's go ahead, let's flip it over. You can see from the bottom right here, we have a lot of features to go over. Multiple cliff sensors so it won't fall down the steps or anything like that. You can see our side brush, charging contacts, omnidirectional wheel, AeroForce cleaning system right here. We have a tab we can use to remove if we need to clean the brushes or anything else. And you can see the two roller brush design. We have our drive wheels right here. And then you can see the bottom of our dustbin. So everything looks really, really nice. Now let's go ahead, let's get it set up. So you can see we got the i4 Plus all set up and ready to go. And on our mobile device, we have the iRobot app downloaded. Once you sign in and create an account, you'll be at this screen where you're ready to set up and add your new RoboVac. So in this case, let's choose Roomba. Now we can choose our model. So this is Roomba as well. Now we have a checklist walking us through what we need to get started, what we need to prepare for the charger and how to set that up properly against a wall. Now we can name our vacuum. So let's name it I4. Select continue. Now we need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. In this case, we need to connect to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So select your network, then continue. Now at this stage, enter your password, then select continue. Now we're ready to activate our RoboVac. So we have to hold down the home button and the spot cleaning button for two seconds till we hear a chime. There we go. Now we can select, I press the buttons, continue. Now it's gonna search for the RoboVac. Now it's working on connecting to the Roomba. So here we go, it just popped up. We can select connect and now it's connecting to our device. The Roomba was discovered and now it's finalizing settings. Now you can see it's connecting to our network. And we just got a chime, so it's making some noise for us. That's a good sign letting us know that it's connected and now you can see it's establishing a cloud connection. This could take a few minutes. All right, check it out, setup's complete. It didn't even take a minute. I'd say at the most it took about 20 seconds. Now it's gonna introduce us to our Roomba i4 Plus. So let's go ahead, let's select next. And you can see it's gonna clean in logical patterns back and forth. It's gonna actually have a sensical clean. Charging station placement. It's obstacle avoidance with its cliff sensors. How to prep your home, get cords and everything out of the way. And there we go. Now we're taken into our vacuum settings. Let's go ahead, let's dive into the app in more detail. So first up, you can see we can add a new job in the top right hand corner. We can set a time limit if we want, none to 45 minutes. We can save as a favorite as well. Next, you can see our charging status, our empty bin indicator right there. So we're emptying the bin. And you can see pretty quick, really nice. I like the chime too, the nice tone letting us know that it's all set and ready to go. And again, we could empty the bin again if we wanted. We have our favorites option. We can vacuum everywhere. Or we can add another favorite, maybe with just a time limit, a 15 minute clean, that sort of thing. We can also play those and activate those right away. Next, we have our scheduling feature. So we can create a schedule right here. We can choose the start time which days of the week we want it to repeat. And then you can see we have our automation settings, so we could turn this on, so when we leave our home, it's gonna detect that and then it could start cleaning. So instead of a specific time, maybe you have a flexible schedule, you just want it to clean every time you're gone, you can enable that, choose the days of the week you want, and you're all set and ready to go there. So a couple different options for the scheduling features. Then you can see once we actually use this to clean our house, we'll have our cleaning history here, we'll have any messages as well, then we can see our RoboVac settings. So we have a couple different options. We can learn more about the vacuum. We can locate the Roomba. So here we go. It's letting us know though that it's charging on its base. So how about I take it off the base for a second. And now let's select it. And it's making a noise for us. All right, so pretty cool. Let's put it back on the base so it can continue to charge. Then we have our cleaning preferences right here. So you can see this, we can choose different options depending on what we're after. And then we have our bin full behavior. So you can see do not clean when full or keep cleaning when full. We have some maintenance tips and tricks down below. 
Wi-Fi settings, language, we can turn metric on or off. We can reboot it. We can restore it or remove it within the settings. Then we have a help section as well. So that's a quick look at the app. Now let's go ahead, let's let it charge up, and then let's clean with it. So we just finished our first clean with the i4. Let's go ahead, let's look at the results. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip it over. You can see we have our side brush right here. Everything looks great. It's obviously dirtier now because it's been used. Same with our two cleaning brushes right here. No tangles or anything else like that on them. Then you can see our dustbin with all the contents inside. It's already pretty full. Tons of pet hair, human hair and we have a lot of crumbs, dirt, dust, and debris. So let's go ahead, let's open that up and see what we're working with right here. So check that out, that's disgusting. So there is a quick peek at the inside contents. So grass clippings, we have a ton of stuff in here. I see some carpet threads as well too from our shag rug and a lot of food crumbs in there. So now that we've looked, at the results, let's go back into the app and see some more of the features as they populated. So now we're back in the iRobot app and you can see we have a couple features to go over. So first up, we have the empty bin button. We're gonna press that in a second here so we can empty and self-empty the base right from within the mobile app. But the biggest thing we can see is now that we got our first clean out of the way, we have data populated where we can learn more about our cleans in the total square footage clean and we can get lifetime totals as well. We can also check and choose individual cleans right here. So the i4 does feature map making abilities to let you know the areas that it cleaned for you around the house. But unfortunately with this map, we're unable to edit it. So we cannot set maps for individual floors or set up no-go zones or clean zones. We do not have that capability. You have to get the i6 or the i7 and beyond for those features. But we get a nice breakdown of our clean right here. And you can see on the map, this section wasn't clean because that's where the kitchen table and chairs are. So some of the chair legs and the kitchen table legs are in the way. So it's impossible to clean there when there's something on the floor. But really nice, very detailed, looks great. And then everything else basically stays the same. You might get some more messages along the way depending on what is happening with your vacuum cleaner or any deals or promotions that iRobot is offering. So now let's go ahead, let's select the empty bin button and let's empty out the base. So there we go. All right, well, really, really powerful. Now for fun, let's see how good of a job it did actually getting all the contents out of our dustbin and check that out it's flawless sucked out all that pet hair human hair and all the dirt dust and debris just some really tiny crumbs left along the seal right here but i'm sure if we just shake those back in the next time it's going to run it should get those out but it's empty enough so it can continue on cleaning in the future uninterrupted without having a bin that's too full. So this Roomba will work with Amazon Alexa. Go ahead, open up your Alexa app on your mobile device. Choose the more option in the bottom right hand corner. Then choose skills and games. Select the search icon and start typing in iRobot. And now you can see we have iRobot Home. We can open that up. And at this screen, yours may say enable skill launch or something like that. Mine says launch and settings because I've already linked my account. But if yours says enable, then you can go ahead, you can click that button, enter your iRobot credentials, authorize Amazon Alexa, and you're all set and ready to go. And then you can see the basic skills that we have. We can tell it to start or stop vacuuming, and then we can send it home. So let's try it out. Hey Alexa, ask Roomba to start vacuuming. So there we go, it got the signal and the command and it's gonna start vacuuming for us right now. Hey Alexa, ask Roomba to stop vacuuming. So check that out, it just shut it down right there. And there we go, now it's gonna send it home.
There we go. It's just that simple. So now you can see the I-4 cleaning in the kitchen right here as it goes along the baseboards of the cabinets. You can see it's going to clean back and forth in a logical cleaning pattern. So here we go. It's going around the perimeter of the cabinets. And you can see how it's doing a really good job navigating the edge. Now it's going to go back and forth in the logical cleaning pattern that you see right here. So it's going to make its way up on the floor mat. It's going to run into the wall right there. Now you can see it's going to continue on with that same zigzag cleaning pattern. Now I have it in spot cleaning mode. You can see we got the cool blue indicator light up top on the unit. It's going to go around in a circle and clean a specific area. And I wanted to do it in this specific room so you guys can see what it's like to deal with the shoes as an obstacle, but most importantly, how it's able to transition from a hard surface, so our hard floor, to our rug. So you can see it's gonna be able to go back and forth right here. Pretty difficult cleaning environment with those shoes and being half on and half off our rug. So it's doing a great job with those transitions. You can also get a feel for spot cleaning mode. It's just gonna go around and around and around in a specific set area to clean for you. And then once it's finished, it'll get smaller again with the circle and then end on the spot where you originally set it down to activate spot cleaning mode. So here it is. You can see it's navigating the shoes just fine. Look at that, it was even able to run over the sandal right there pushing the shoes out of the way and no issues at all with the power of the vacuum to be able to go up and down from our nice runner that we have in this room. Now we're testing out the cliff sensors right here. So you can see we have the vacuum right at the top of the steps and it's gonna try to drive right off. And there we go, it's smart enough to recognize the stairs and continue on with its clean. So here we go, you can see our Roomba is now on our shag rug. This is one of the most difficult rugs for any RoboVac, regardless of price or brand name to navigate. In this case, it's fairly successful making it up onto the rug as well as driving on it, but performance is greatly reduced. And if it can make it back up on the rug, typically it will also get stuck as well. So I don't recommend having any RoboVac clean a rug as difficult as the one you see here. So carpet is fine, hard surfaces are fine, but if you have a shag rug like this, don't expect any RoboVac to be able to successfully clean it. And you can anticipate having your RoboVac get stuck on it pretty frequently. So here we go, we got the Roomba cleaning on the carpets right now in the nursery, so check it out. You can see the nice lines it's leaving back and forth on the carpet, so we have great striping action right here. So you can see it's gonna go in that logical cleaning pattern, and it's gonna go back and forth, giving us a fantastic clean. So you can see it's able to navigate just fine on the carpet right here. Maybe a smidge slower than if it was on a hard floor. But look at those nice cleaning lines really impressive and basically there's about half of an overlap between the previous pass as you can see right there with the lines so you have to give it a minute to get familiar with the room and then it'll be able to navigate it just fine and it's able to turn on the carpets go back and forth and leave us those nice cleaning lines like you see here in the video so let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Roomba i4. I gotta say overall the best feature by far is the self-emptying base. It's a luxury, but I would argue it's a necessity. Once you use it, you're not gonna wanna go back to a RoboVac that doesn't have one. Now, with that being said, there's something I wanna point out. If you're already considering this product, I would highly recommend that you check out the i6 or the i7 or the plus variants of that model because for a couple of bucks more, yes, it's gonna cost you more money, but I would argue it's worthwhile. You pick up a sensor at the top that allows you then to have smart navigation features. So you're able to take the map that your vacuum cleaner makes and place 
basically some rectangles and squares on it where you want the vacuum cleaner to clean or where you don't want it to go. And having those no-go zones is very important. And just like the self-emptying base, having an even smarter RoboVac with those mapping features is definitely worthwhile. Once you use it, you will never wanna go back to a vacuum cleaner without it. So it's hard for me to recommend this vacuum cleaner because of those other options available that I definitely think are worth while it's actually a substantial and a meaningful upgrade well that concludes our video thank you so much for watching don't forget the product link will be in our video description below please go ahead check it out and do your shopping from there any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you so we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support while you're at it can you go ahead and hit that like button for us and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.